What's going on guys and welcome back to another video with Sod or Season of Discovery approaching in the next couple of weeks. We need to figure out which DPS are going to be top tier for PvE in Black Fathom Deeps in our new raid here at level 25. So in this video I'm going to break down and make our own tier list of what we think here is going to be the top tier DPS at level 25 phase 1 of Season of Discovery. So without further ado guys, let's dive in. Alright, so first up on our list here, we're going to go with Warrior, right? We have our tier list on the right side here. We have our Wowhead Talent Calculator with our runes over here on the left side. So, the way we're going to do this is we are going to put our runes in our chest, hand, and legs first, and then do our talent build based around that, uh, because we're talking BIS level 25 phase 1 DPS, and then we're going to rank them over here. Now, every class seems to have gotten something really good um, that is going to make them feel really strong in pretty much every situation when it comes to PvE um, and PvP. But the thing is here that I want to put the runes in first because some of our runes will actually determine how we build our talents. So let's start with the chest rune for warrior. Um, we have blood frenzy. Each time you deal bleed damage, you gain three rage. Flagellation, gain a 25% bonus to physical damage done for 12 seconds after activating blood rage or berserker rage. Raging blow, uh, ferocious strike that deals 100% weapon damage but can only be used while in rage or warbringer. Um, so for me... Uh, what I think, we're talking level 25, right? We're talking phase one. Um, really, how many rage spenders do you have at, at, at level 25? You don't, you know, you don't have Mortal Strike yet or Whirlwind or Bloodthirst or anything like that. So I think Blood Frenzy, not very worth it, uh, simply because I don't think we're going to be really that rage starved. Um, I think that maybe... Flagellation or Raging Blow is going to be wh what we take for just pure DPS. Um, so this can go kind of one or one of two ways. Uh, but I would I would maybe argue that Flagellation is probably the better the better the better rune here. We're going to go with Flagellation, right? Just twenty five percent bonus to dam physical damage. I mean that's huge. So hands next. Uh, we have Endless Rage. You generate twenty five percent more rage from all damage you deal. We have Quick Strike, um, a reckless instant melee attack with your two-handed weapon, dealing 50 to 83 damage. This benefits from anything that, that affects a, her a heroic strike. Single-Minded Fury, while dual-wielding your physical damage and movement speed are increased by 10%. Um, in my opinion, this is going to be the biggest DPS increase here. You're obviously going to be dual-wielding for the maximum amount of damage. Even if you're not full Fury spec, uh, Single-Minded Fury is just going to be massive. That's just a permanent 10% damage increase and movement speed. Um, when you're dual wielding. So we're going to take that. And then for our legs here, we have Consumed by Hate by Rage. Uh, enrages you and grants you a 25% melee damage bonus for 12 seconds or up to a maximum of 12 swings after you exceed 80 Rage. Um, so we can most likely go with that. This is, you know, Furious Thunder. Thunderclap is mainly used for tanking. Um, Frenzy to Salt would be good if we're going with two-hander. Uh, so if we were to go with single-minded fury we're going to take consumed by rage obviously um so that's 25 percent damage bonus and then if you pop blood rage you're getting another you're, so you basically have 50 percent damage bonus 10 percent attack speed uh 10 percent so 60 percent physical damage bonus between all these runes right here if you pop blood rage um but if we wanted to go a two-hander build we would go frenzied assault which increases our attack speed by 20 percent with two handers and then we would not take single-minded fury and maybe take Endless Rage, um, since we're going to be building Rage a little slower with a two-hander. Uh, or you could take Quick Strike for an extra strike. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to go with this build. Um, we're going to pretend we're dual wielding. So what we're really going to want to do here is, let's see, we're going to go... Let's go into the Fury Tree. Eh, I mean, the Fury Tree at low levels is really not that great. So I actually think our best bet is to go dual wield arms, um, which I actually did in hardcore and it worked out really well. We're going to go with improved rend and we're going to go with two points into heroic strike um, to reduce our heroic strike abilities rage cost. And then we're going to go with two points into improved charge, tactical mastery, three points, deep wounds, three points to give us some more bleed damage. Um, 
We want to get our overpower. Uh, so we have one point left to spend. But this is a big one that we want to make sure we get. Because when you're dual wield arms leveling, or at this stage of the game you're going to be raiding, um, having improved overpower is just absolutely massive. And when you really think about it, between all these runes down here, 60% physical damage increase, and basically critting half of the time with overpower, you're a low level, so you're going to be missing a lot. Um, and you're going to be overpowering a lot. Uh, they're, they're, they're going to be dodging you quite a bit. So overpower comes up a lot. That's why I actually... It was probably the best way to level my warrior from, from like 20 to 32 uh, in hardcore. Uh, so I would take improved overpower. And then here we have one point left to spend. And obviously we're going to take impale, which increases our critical strike damage bonus of all of our abilities pretty much. Uh, so that is pretty huge, 10% on that. So this would be my... Bis build for, for what I think would give warriors the maximum amount of damage at level 25. I could be wrong. Uh, the Fury Tree might be better if you get improved cleave and maybe improved battle shouts um, and like a point or two and enrage. But the thing is with this is that I don't know. I've tested both. I played a lot of warrior and dual wield arms from 20 to 30. Um, you know, some of my buddies told me about it and I tried it on my last hardcore warrior. And uh, it was it was really really strong. So I would say that this is going to give you the most damage output, the most sustained, um, you know, damage output from warrior. You're going to go arms, maybe dual wield. You can swap out, go two hander. Maybe that 20% attack speed is even bigger than single minded fury. So that could be huge too. But either way, this build will work for dual wielding or two handers. You would just have to swap out single minded fury for uh, endless rage or quick strike, and then you would take frenzied assault. Um, but the way I would play it would be like this. So that would be my build. And I think warriors are going to do incredible damage at this level. Um, so I'm going to put them up in A tier. Uh, the only reason they're not S tier is I think because some other classes uh, have a lot more AoE than warriors. I mean, at this level you have cleave. Uh, and that's about it. You don't have uh, you know whirlwind yet. So warriors for me, A tier. Next up on our list here we have warlock. Okay, so for Warlock, let's go over our runes here. We have Demonic Tactics. Increase the melee and spell critical strike chance of you and your pet by 10%. That's a pretty big one. Just 10% crit is huge. Um, Rain of Fire also leaves a lake of fire on the ground that increases all fire damage you deal and your demon, demon pet deals to affected enemies by 40% for 15 seconds. So we're going to go with one of these two here. Let's go with Lake of Fire. Uh, just because 40% extra damage is pretty insane, and if you have your imp out, uh, you know, casting fire bolts, that's going to do a lot of damage. We're going to go to hands next, um, and obviously here, our choice is chaos bolt, sends a bolt of chaotic fire at the enemy, dealing 225 to 286 fire damage. Chaos bolt always hits, cannot be resisted, and its knowledge causes all your fire spells to pierce through absorption effects, so that's fire damage. It'll coincide with lake of fire, which, uh, so chaos bolt will do 40% more damage while you're Imp is blasting for 40% more damage. That's a lot of damage. Uh, legs. So what we're going to want to do here is probably pick up Incinerate. Um, you could argue that you would take Demonic Pact. Uh, but the thing is that Incinerate is going to be stronger because obviously with our we're going to kind of chain all of these together, right? We're going to be using Lake of Fi Rain of Fire to get our Lake of Fire going. We're going to use Chaos Bolt on cooldown. And then we're going to be spamming Incinerate. Um, and this increases all fire damage you deal by 25% for the next 15 seconds. So you cast Rain of Fire on the opener on a pack of mobs in BFD. You know, you're going to maybe hit one incinerate, and then that will buff your Chaos Bolt by 25%, and then Chaos Bolt gets buffed another 40% because of Lake of Fire. So 65% stronger Chaos Bolt is pretty massive. And then clearly here the choice is to go down into the Destruction Tree. Um... I think what we're going to be doing here is we're not taking Improved Shadow Bolt because it looks like we're kind of going a Fire Destruction build. Uh, we're going to do 5 points into Cataclysm to reduce our mana cost by 5%. Um, we're going to take Bane to reduce our... Ooh, wait a minute. Hmm. Well, it, it decreases... I was going to say, I'm not sure if Bane affects Incinerate. I'm sure it does. But even if it doesn't... Uh, it's still the best choice here because we are going to be putting Immolate up on the target as well. Um, so Bane is is hands down the best choice there. We don't need a, a, a Daze or Improved Shadow Bolt. 
Um, and then down here, we're going to take Devastation for the 5% chance to crit. And we have one more talent point to spend here. So I would argue that we can either go... I honestly think the best choice here would be to go with Improved Firebolt for your Imp. Uh, because that is with this build, that's clearly going to be uh, the, the pet that you're using. Um, and I think this would be... Uh, at level 25, this is going to do the most damage, right? These mobs die fairly quickly, so you want upfront damage. There are some really good runes that we can use for, like, a nice affliction spec, but I don't think that's going to do more damage than destruction early on, especially with this fire destruction build. Um, so we're going, to go, we're going to go with this for Warlocks. Uh, we're going to go with a fire destruction build, and I think this is going to actually be S tier. This is going to be a lot of damage. You have Cleave and AoE with Lake of Fire. You have Chaos Bolt and Incinerate for just insane amounts of single target damage and improve Fire Bolt for your Imp to just sit there and, and, you know, just blast. So, Warlocks, S tier in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, but let's move on to Hunter. Okay, so for Hunter, we're going to go with Chest Runes, right? We have Cobra Strikes. Your critical stri uh, critical hits with shot abilities cause your pet's next two special attacks to critical hit. Not a bad one. Expose Weakness. Your range criticals increase your attack power by 40% of your current agility for 7 seconds. Lone Wolf, you deal 25% increased damage with all attacks while you do not have a pet. Master Marksman, increase your crit chance by 5% and reduce mana, mana cost of all your shots by 25%. Um, I think the clear winner here is going to be expose weakness um for level 25 rating uh this is going to be pretty big when you crit you're gaining 40 percent of your current agility as attack power uh you could argue that maybe lone wolf would be better but we'd have to kind of do some testing because your pet does quite a bit of a damage in vanilla um so i would i would take expose weakness right and then for hands we have beast mastery we have carve we have chimera shot um we have explosive shot Obviously, I think the clear winner here for PvE DPS is going to be Explosive Shot. And then for Legs, we have Kill Command, Serpent Spread, Sniper Training. Um, so depending how the raid goes, if you can stand still for 6 seconds, I think Sniper Training might be very useful. But I really do think that Serpent Spread is going to be the way to go. Targets hit by your multi-shot are also affected by your Serpent Sting. So when you're clearing trash in a raid... Just being able to multi-shot and just instantly have, you know, three or four Serpent Stings up is pretty huge. And then obviously for this build, we're going to be going into the Marksman Tree. We're going to take Efficiency to reduce the mana cost of all of our Shots and Stings by 10%. We're going to take Lethal Shots for another 5% chance to crit. Um, and then obviously here we are going to take Aimed Shot and probably... Let's try and think about our rotation here. Like, I mean... We, I'm not sure if we'll be using Arcane Shot, but if we are using Arcane Shot, we would want to throw four points into that and then take one point into Mortal Shots. Um, or we can kind of put four points into Improved Hunter's Mark and then one sh point into Mortal Shots. Depends how much we're using Arcane Shot. You know, if we're using it a lot, worth it to put four points in there to reduce the cooldown by 0.8 seconds and then one point in Mortal Shot. If we're not using it, you put four points into Improved Hunter's Mark and then take Mortal Shots. Um, but for the purposes of this video, let's just say we are using Arcane Shot. This would be level 25, level, level 25. This would be level 25 Hunter uh, Biss build. And I think this is going to do ridiculous amounts of damage. So I'm going to put Hunters in S tier. So next up we have Rogue, right? Let's look at the Rogue's runes. We have Deadly Brew. When you inflict any other poison on target, you also inflict Deadly Poison. Um, quick draw. Draw your ranged weapon and fire a quick shot at the enemy. Uh, this is more of like a PvP type ability, like a hamstring. Um, slaughter from the shadows. Reduce your energy cost of your backstab ambush by 20%. Does not apply to doesn't apply to mutilate. Uh, so what I think the best build here is gonna be is gonna be Deadly Brew. Um, and then I would say for our hand engraving, we have Mutilate, we have Main Gouge, that's a tanking ability, Saber Slash, this is a nice bleed, um, but I think the clear winner here is gonna be Mutilate, uh, yeah, I think Mutilate's going to be the clear winner here, paired with Deadly Brew. And then for Legs, uh, we're going to obviously take in Venom, because this all kind of plays in together. 
Um, and then we're going to probably go down into... <sighs> this is going to be a tricky one for Rogue, right? Um... Because if you're using Mutilate, Mutilate benefits from all talents and effects that trigger from or modify backstab unless otherwise specified. Okay, so that is huge. That's really big. Um, I say that for Rogue, let's just test, test something out, right? Let's say we go Assassination, right? We go Malice with a 5% crit. We go Ruthlessness. We go two points in murder. We go five points in lethality for the extra critical strike damage bonus. We have one point left to spend and we throw it into vile poisons for that extra damage. Um, but let's just try something else, right? Let's say we go combat. We... We're not really going to be using Sinister Strike if we're using Mutilate, right? So let's just say... We go combat, right? We get the 5% hit, which is really big here. We get improved backstab, which mutilate benefits from all talents and effects that modify backstab. So mutilate gets a 30% chance to crit here. Uh, and then we have three points left to use. Yeah, so combat early on. Maybe this would change later on, but th th definitely the best way to do this is going to be um, assassination for this build to do a ton of damage. And remember, these builds are just speculation from me. Um, based on, like, all the runes that are available at level 25. Um, so this would be the build that I go as a rogue. Your, your single target damage is going to be just unbeatable. Um, and I would put rogue in top of S. Top of S tier. Maybe right under warriors, because they don't have a cleave. That's the only thing kind of holding them back. Um, their single target damage would be absolutely insane, but they just don't have any cleave. And, um, from watching the playtest at BlizzCon, it does look like there is a lot of trash in B the BFD raid, um, so I would keep rogues in eight, solid A tier. And so let's move on to mage. Okay, for chest, we have burnout. Increases your spell critical strike chance with all spells by 15%, but your non-periodic spell critical strikes now have an additional mana cost of 1% of your base mana. Um, I think the main thing here is going to be... Uh, Probably, probably Fingers of Frost, to be honest. Just the damage increase from that is just too insane. Um, and hands, like... I mean, the, the, you could probably play this two ways. You could probably play Frost and do a ton of damage with Ice Lance, Fingers of Frost, and Icy Veins, right? And then we can go down this, the tree like this. Um, we could take... Cold Snap for Icy Veins. Um... Like, this would be, like, a good Frost DPS build for Fingers of Frost, which is just a ton of extra damage. Ice Lance, ridiculous damage. Icy Veins, and then we have Cold Snap. Um, like, this would be just crazy amounts of damage. Or we could play it like this, and we can take Burnout, we can take Living Bomb, and we can take... Um, for, see, for here, we would still take Icy Veins, um, and we can do, like, a Fire build, right? Uh, let's see. We obviously would take Ignite... Uh, we would definitely, we probably wouldn't really cast Pyroblast much outside of the opener. So we would probably take Incinerate for that extra crit chance. Um, improved Flame Strike for more AoE. And then we would probably put one point in Master of Elements to kind of give us a little bit of mana back because Burnout's going to be killing our mana. But you'd have, I mean, you'd have a ton of damage in either one of these specs. You can kind of play it. However you want. Uh, I think Mage is going to be absolutely S tier. There's just... They just have too much damage. And having Living Bomb at level 25 and Icy Veins. And if you're Frost, you can Cold Snap Icy Veins twice. Burn out. Like, Mages are going to just be doing insane amounts of damage. Uh, so, up next, we have Shaman. So, again, you could play Elemental. You could play Enhancement here. Right? Let's go over the chest runes. Let's say we're going Enhancement. We obviously take Dual Wielding. Um, which is also giving us an, a 5% hit chance uh, right off the bat, which is huge, and Stormstrike will hit with both weapons. However, we do not have Stormstrike until level 50, so that is, that is pretty crazy. Or level 40, sorry. Um, and then we go for hands. 
We would obviously take Lava Lash. You charge your offhand weapon with lava, instantly dealing 100% offhand weapon damage. Damage is increased by 20% if your offhand is enchanted with Flame Tongue. So this would be like our enhancement build. And then we take Shamanistic Rage. Um, reduces all damage you take by 20%. You regenerate mana every second for 15 seconds. Mana regenerated per second is equal to 15% of your attack power, 10% of your spell power, or 6% of your healing power, whichever value is greatest. So we take Shamanistic Rage, and then we go down into the Enhancement Tree. We take probably Ancestral Knowledge for some extra mana. We take Thundering Strikes for 5% crit chance. Uh, we're not going to be two-handed using. I mean, you could if you want to. I'm sure there's some builds that can be made. Um, but we're going to probably put two in Enhancing Totems. Um, maybe... Take Improved Lightning Shield. Seems like it might be the only one that's kind of beneficial to us. We won't be able to use Ghost Wolf in there. And then we put our last point in Flurry to get that Flurry proc. I think Shamans will do a ton of damage here as well. Uh, the only difference is they don't have a ton of AoE. Um, but they will be doing some serious damage. So I'm going to put Shamans up in A tier right next to Rogues. And next up on the list here, we have Priest. So for Priest, Priest got some pretty cool stuff. So for the Chest Glyph, we're going to either be going with Void Plague or Twisted Faith, right? Mind Flay and Mind Blast deal 20% increased damage to targets afflicted with your Shadow Word Pain. I think that Void Plague is also good. It's just another dot, but Twisted Faith is going to be way better at level 25, and I'll show you why. So Hands... Uh, the next thing we want here, obviously, is Mines here. Cause an explosion of shadow magic around the target enemy, causing 35 to 39 shadow damage every one second for five seconds to all enemies within 10 yards around the target. So we take Mines here there for our nice AoE. And then here in the last slot, our leg slot, we're going to take Shared Pain. Uh, your Shadow Word Pain now afflicts up to two additional nearby targets within 15 yards. So that's going to give you a nice Shadow Cleave um, from Shadow Word Pain. Um... And that's going to kind of play off a of Twisted Faith. So you're going to, you know, put Shadow Word Pain up. It's going to hit three targets. Twisted Faith um, is going to do more damage because uh, your target's afflicted with Shadow Word Pain. And then Mind Seer on, like, those trash AoE pulls. So then in the Shadow Tree, uh, we could take Spirit Tap, uh, which gives you a 100% chance to gain 100% of your spirit bonus to your spirit after you're killing the target that yields experience or honor. I mean, this would give us good mana regen, or we could take Blackout, um, but I would go with Spirit Tap for PvE. Increases the duration of your Shadow Word Pain. Um, might want to go with Shadow Affinity. Actually, I, I don't think tanks are going to have a problem holding threat at all in Season of Discovery, to be honest. They have so many talents that boost their threat generation by like 80% 80, 80 plus. So for this, I would honestly go with Two into Improve Shadow Word Pain, three into Shadow Focus, um, and then down here we have six points left to spend. Um, I don't really... Yeah, I mean, I guess we would do five points into Mind Blast, and then... Either one point in Shadow... I mean, Mind Flay is pretty... I say we do four points into Improve Mind Blast... And then one point in Shadow Weaving. Mm. Nah, it's only 3%. So I think that that extra 0.5 cooldown reduction on Mind Blast is actually just bigger. Um, so this would be my build if I was playing Shadow Priest uh, at level 25 for Black Fathom Deeps. It's going to do an absolute sh megaton of damage. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun to play. And you could probably play this a couple of different ways. I'm not a Priest main, but... This is how I would build my damage increase. If you guys have any suggestions, drop some comments down below. And I think priests will absolutely be S tier. Next up on our list here, we have druids, right? We could play balance. We could play feral. So let's let's go with a feral build at first. Wild strikes. This is wind fury, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know. Um, so we're obviously going to take wild strikes, which is going to just increase our damage by a ton. And it's going to increase the entire raid's damage, raid and party. Uh, each melee has a 20% chance of granting the attacker an extra attack with 20% additional attack power, uh, which is just enormous. So we got to take Wild Strikes there. Uh, we have to take Mangle here. Mangle the target for 160 normal damage and cause the target to take 30% additional damage from Bleed Effects and Shred for one minute. So we take Mangle. And then Legs, obviously, we take Savage Roar. Um, Skull Bash would not be used for PvE. I mean, we would have to use rely on other classes to... Uh, do, do the interrupts, but I'm not sure how many there are in the Black Fathom Deeps raid, but Savage Roar is just too big. I mean, physical damage done increased by 30% while in cat form. 
Um, it's just, it's too big. So let's say we go with that, uh, and then we go down the feral tree, obviously, right? So we're going to probably go with ferocity, um, five less rage for us to cast rake, um, which would be really nice. Uh, we're going to go down a little bit more. We're going to probably, it's kind of like, kind of a waste to take feral aggression this early because we don't have ferocious bite yet. Um, thick hide kind of, kind of a waste. I guess we would take brutal impact. Um, and then we would take three points into Feral Instinct. And then obviously here we want Sharpened Claws. Um, and then we can get Feline Swiftness, two points. We have one more point to spend. And I think we would be spending that most likely in Blood Frenzy. Because Predatory Strikes increase your melee attack power in Cat Bear and Dire Bear forms by 50% of your level. That's like 12.5. It's not going to be that good. So we're going to... Hmm. Or do we take six reduced costs to shred. I don't think we do. I think Blood Frenzy is... Because you're going to be critting a lot. So I think Blood Frenzy is is actually still, uh, still a DPS increase over that. We'd have to play around with this and kind of figure it out. Um, but that would be our Feral Cat build. And then over here, um, we can go back and kind of do a balanced druid build we would take fury of storm rage reduces the mana cost of wrath by 100 percent and each time you deal damage with wrath you have a 12 percent chance for your next cast of healing touch within 15 seconds of the instant so it'd be kind of like a hybrid damage healer ability uh we would obviously take sunfire burns the enemy for 55 to 65 nature damage and then an additional 110 over 12 seconds so that would mean that you'd have to put moonfire and sunfire up i'm not sure how good that would be but it might work. And then here we would take Star Surge, launch surging stellar energies that cause 57 to 70 arcane damage, benefits from all effects that affect Wrath or Starfire. We would take Starfire. And then down in the balance tree, we would obviously go with Improved Wrath. Um, okay, so Sunfire does get affected by the Moonfire talent. So we would do that. Um, we would take Improved Moonfire. We would definitely take probably Nature's Reach and then maybe we're not going to be shifting much. We're not doing physical damage. We, I guess we would just take uh, Improved Thorns to help our tanks hold threat. Um, and then we would go with Vengeance with for our last point. Yeah, Vengeance would be our last point. So this would be a good, solid Boomkin build. I do think Druids are going to do a bunch of damage, but I don't think that the thing that they're lacking is uh, Cleave. Once again, they, they don't have that much AoE early on. They don't have that much Cleave. So Druids for me are going to be A tier. And next up, last but certainly not least, we have Paladins. So this is a pretty big one. Paladins got a lot of nice stuff. So... Paladin DPS in Black Fathom Deep's Raid. We're obviously going to go with the chest engraving for Divine Storm, an instant weapon attack that causes 110 weapon damage up to four enemies, and it heals three party or raid members, totaling 25% of the damage caused. So Divine Storm, no-brainer. We take that on our chest. For hands, obviously here we take Crusader Strike, so we have a button to press on a red paladin. Uh, it's going to just it's going to just do damage and help us regenerate mana. Um, and then for legs, we are going to take probably exorcist i would imagine unless we need another interrupt um yeah so exorcist uh exorcism can now be cast on any target and has a hundred percent chance to critical strike against undead and demons so we're going to take exorcism so basically it's going to be very similar to the wrath paladin rotation wrath wrath paladin you're going to have crusader strike divine storm exorcism uh you're going to have seal of command uh so it's going to be pretty crazy um Rep Pallies are going to do a lot of damage, like a lot of damage. Um, so then for our build, we're going to be getting mana back with Crusader Strike, so I don't think we need Benediction. I think we go with Improved Blessing of Might, right? And then I think we go with Improved Judgment to decrease the cooldown and then Improved Seal of the Crusader. Um, then obviously we take Seal of Command. That's our main damaging ability. We take five points in Conviction for that extra 5% critical strike chance. Um, and then that is it. This is going to be our Rhett Pally build. Rhett Pallies are absolutely going to slap, I'm telling everyone right now. At least in this bracket, you know, next bracket when the level cap gets raised to 40 in Phase 2, you know, there's going to be some serious changes. Maybe Rogues get a Phantom Knives glyph. 
Uh, maybe druids get a swipe glyph for cat form. Maybe and warriors will have whirlwind and whatever other glyphs they get. Um, so for me, ret paladins, I think, are going to absolutely be the best DPS um, at level 25. I think they are going to be untouchable in the raid. Um, and then I do think Warlock belongs a little bit behind Hunter there. Maybe even behind Mage. I think Mage is going to do a little more damage than Warlock. I think Shadow Priest and Warlock are going to be kind of on par. But yeah, this is how I would rate each DPS class for PvE at level 25 Phase 1 Season of Discovery. I will be making a tier list for PvP as well, so stay tuned for that. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It really does help me out a lot. And drop some comments down below. This is just speculation. You know, I haven't played, so... If you guys have any suggestions or ideas, drop them in the comments below. If you have nothing to say at all, drop an emoji. It helps me out with the algorithm quite a bit. And subscribe to the channel. Turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next time I post a video. I'm making a ton of content on Season of Discovery. I'm going to be pumping content out up until it comes out. And then even after it comes out, content almost every day for you guys. I've been waiting for this, waiting for something like this for quite a while. So I'm pretty excited to play and I'm excited to make content. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just going to have a good time with it. If you guys want to hang out with me live, I do stream on Twitch Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash hammerdance. I'll drop a link to that in the description below this video. But anyways, guys, that's all from me. Thank you all so much for watching and listening in. I'll see you all in the next one.